versus time, career versus family, and of course money versus needs. Um, it's not unusual too, and this is a dad issue a lot of times. One of the things dads have a big tendency to do is when they get stressed out on family issues or there's a, a problem in the family or an issue like, for instance, a child with special needs, is they will submerge themselves in what they know best. And one of those things is working. Um, I, had a, I was talking with a dad not too long ago who um, said he, had, he really had started working six, seven days a week because it was all he knew how to do to help his family. That was the way he was brought up. So he, he was having a real hard time balancing that money versus needs thing. His wife really needed him at home. And that was something we had talked about. And he was going to try and step back on his workload a little bit because really he was just, in his mind, going to work and earning more money was what was really supportive of his family. When and he said, and he had said, really the money wasn't so much the issue, it's just all he knew how to do. So don't get trapped in that, that just more money, more money. Now, don't get me wrong, money is important. You've got to be able to pay the bills, do the things you need to do to take your family, take care of your family. But don't get trapped in that in that kind of sit down and look, step back. Sit back and step back and look at that situation and go, how much do I really need versus what are my needs of my family? And you can see that seesaw of juggling, trying to come to a balance. It's hard. It's very, very hard. But find that balance. It will benefit your, your family, it will benefit your child. Acceptance. This is the most, probably the most important thing you can do to reduce stress levels. And it's the hardest. And I'm a bad one for this. Change happens. Keep that in mind at all times. Change happens. I had a boss a few years ago. I would go in her office, I'd be upset, I'd be fussing just over something. She'd look at me and go, honey, change happens. And I'd go, yeah, yeah, fine, I understand. And she'd laugh a little bit and look at me and go, honey, change happens. And I'd do, a little once again, and she'd go, Mark, change happens. And basically she'd talk me in off the ledge by telling me change happens. And she was teaching me something. To remember that you can't control everything. You can't control everything that's going on. You have to accept change. It's going to happen and there's nothing you can do about it. And when you do that, when you can accept that change happens, you can really step back on those stress levels because it becomes easier to deal with the things that happen that you can't control. Choices. You've got to make choices. We've talked a lot about making choices as we've gone through this. You've got to be willing to make choices. You can't necessarily do everything all the time. There are times you may have to choose. The question gets to be, are you making a choice that's most beneficial for you and for your family and for your child? That's got to be your call. But when you begin to make those choices, again, you can put away those other things that you chose not to do or chose that you don't need, and it will help bring that stress levels down. Now a big one. Talk, 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 talk. Inside a family is probably the most important things. If you are talking with your significant other or your spouse, talking to you with the teachers, talking with the therapists and the doctors, you're keeping that flow of information going between you. And one of the things to remember about talking, just because that person you're talking with doesn't agree with you, doesn't mean that they're wrong or that you're wrong. They have a different opinion on how to approach that situation. Accept that. It, it's possible that they may actually be right, or that they may have an idea that can be incorporated in with your ideas and meshed together to may come up with an even better solution to whatever the issue is that you're talking about. But I, so many times I see people get mad at no, that, that zero-sum game. It's all or nothing. And really it's not. It's trying to come to that middle ground somewhere. You know, it may be that you look at somebody and say, you know what, I, I don't necessarily agree with your solution, but it's certainly a valid solution or something worth trying, we'll try it. But if it doesn't work, let's give it a period of time. If it doesn't work, then we'll try something else. And that's the other thing of raising a child with special needs. You've got the ability in over time to try something else if something's not working. It's, once again, it's not a zero-sum game. It's got to be this way or no way. Okay? Keep that in mind. Managing time. We talked about that 
that was a big one. Managing, managing time, reducing those stress needs, stress, the stress load by feeling like you've got to be somewhere all the time on that agenda. It's okay to say no to some things. It's okay to step away from things a little bit and say, uh-uh. Okay? It's hard to do. What can you fix? Now, let me be clear. I'm not talking. I am not talking about fixing the child. The child is not broken. Okay? But, what can you fix? Does the car need fixed because I can't get to work if the car isn't fixed? Or, I got a loose wheel on the table over here that needs to get fixed, but it's still working fine. I don't really need to fix it today. Fix what you can fix right then and there. If the car needs fixed, you need it, that's a priority. Fix it. But that table leg, you don't know, really want to spend two hours fixing the table leg or the wheel on the table leg. On the cart, but because it, it still work, it'll still will work. Put it aside. It's okay. What can you fix? What can't you fix? Well, maybe you're not going to. You decide that the, you know you'd really like to uh, to get your child a particular type of service, but you can't do that right now. That service isn't available, or it doesn't really fit the child's needs at this point in time. You can't fix that problem or issue right then and there. Keep it in your mind. Maybe in the future it will work, but don't try and force it right then and there. Prioritize and think about what's important and do those things. Growing some skin and building a wall. And by the way, what can you fix? Again, this is another big dad issue. Dads are really bad about wanting to fix everything. That's the way we're brought up. That's the way we're brought up. If you can't fix it with duct tape, for instance, I just don't try. So. Growing skin and building a wall. For, 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 for the ladies, for the women, typically we're talking about growing skin. I know when we had our son, um, we didn't know if he'd ever walk. Uh, he, but, but we had a Riften walker. If anybody of y'all ever, any of y'all have ever seen a Riften walker, it's a big metal framed walker. It has four caster wheels kind of on the ends of it on each corner, and then it's got another big frame, that metal piece that comes up, it comes like this, and then usually a leather strap in the middle, it goes around the child's chest to help them stay upright. Well, this thing wouldn't work in our house. Our house is just too small, and our son couldn't move it on the carpet. It actually probably weighed more than he did. But we found that if we went to the mall on early Saturday mornings or sometime late, maybe late Saturday afternoons when the crowds were down and there weren't a lot of people there, that he could have all kind of fun at the, at the, at the shopping mall running up and down the aisles, moving up and down the, 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 the big corridors in the mall, and he'd have a lot of fun. And it was great therapy for him. Now, honestly, my son worked, walked for the first time at age seven. He just graduated from high school and spent four years running track. Short distance stuff, he wasn't the fastest in the world, but honestly, this, this, this kind of therapy, this kind of work helped. It was important, so that's why we did it. But we'd go out there, and one Sunday, Sunday evening we were out there, and this little old lady came up to my wife, and I'll never forget, looked, looked right at her and said, how dare you bring him out in the public? He needs to be in like a, a home somewhere where we don't have to see this. And I was fully expecting my wife to melt down and just lose it on the spot. Because it was still, for her, it was like somebody taking the skin off of her arms, or, and, and somebody was standing with a finger on the raw nerves on these issues, because she, she, we to this day don't know why he decided to be born preemie, but she always wondered, was there something she could have done differently? Well, this lady came up and said that to my wife, and I was about 15 feet away or so, and I remember seeing her back go really straight, and I'm thinking, uh-oh, and she just kind of looked at the woman and basically said, for her to, to get out of her face and to go away because, frankly, she, why was this little old lady doing out here looking at her where she was going to see what she was going to look like in 40 years? Why wasn't she in a nursing home? And the little old lady was kind of like, why never? And she stomped off. And, uh, and I remember my wife turning around, her eyes were real big looking at me, and she was, I'm going to the car for a few minutes. And I was like, okay, I've got the child. And she went off to the car. And Ian, our son, wandered around for a few minutes, and then we said, let's go find Mama. Let's go find Mama. So we went on out to the car, and, uh, and Mama had gone out and had a little cry. And, but it was the first time, for her, that was the first time that really the skin had started to 
come back where those nerves weren't quite so exposed. And it means a lot. It takes time. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. It takes time. But it's really important because it helps with that acceptance and that moving on and being able to deal with the issues. For men, we, I call it building the wall. The big issue for men is men, when we start building walls, we sometimes keep going to the point that no emotion gets in. We don't know when to stop building the walls. Really hard. The trick is learning to build it strong enough and high enough that you can block out some of the really bad things, but you still leave it down enough that a little bit of the, the, the emotion you need to function comes in, and you can still see outside and see what's going on and what's, what's happening. Um, when I first started doing these re, these kind of workshops a few years, a number of years ago, it was really hard. I would have to stop a lot of times on the side of the road because I never talked about this stuff before. It was really emotionally hard for me. Um, it was what I used to call it the dragons coming to call because they could fly over and burn everything down inside the castle, you know. And it took me a while to kind of put the fires out where I could continue on. Nowadays, obviously, I can pretty much talk about it no problem at all. I still have those moments, but for the most part. It's pretty good. You know, things are pretty good. But it was building that wall to that right point where I could function. So you got to do that. you got to kind of find a way to protect yourself a little bit. Contact the world. One of the big issues, and one of the things I see with families of kids with special needs, is they have a tendency to protect the child to the point that the child doesn't interact with the world. Get that child out in the world. Let them experience it the good things, the bad things. Let them see, go places, do things. Just like any other kid. These kids are children first. They're kids first. They want to have fun. They want to see the, see things out there. The last thing you want is a child who, who is so sheltered that they can't function as they become an adult. Get them out there where they can see and touch the world. Are bad things going to happen? Yeah, sometimes bad things are going to happen. You're going to run into people who are rude or not polite or situations that, that make you uncomfortable. But you're also going to meet many people and, ha and find things that, that are fun and enjoyable. And, and you're going to find far more of those things, the positives, and you really are the negatives if you try. Get out and contact the world. Dads. Quick thing on dads here. Dads are a unique animal. We got a whole bunch of workshops just for dads because because they dads usually need more assistance in getting through this stuff than the moms do. Dads, you can't fix everything. We've talked all about that already. Think about what you can do. One of the things dads have a tendency to do is think about all the things they can't do. It was really hard for me when I when that realization that we were never really going to play football or, or those kinds of sports. But we found other things. My son, for instance, found scouts. He started as a Cub Scout. He, he, he's now aged out of scouts, but he finished up as an Eagle Scout. One out of a hundred kids make Eagle Scout in Boy Scouts. He loved it. And you know what? I went ahead and joined uh, in the first year. I helped out as an, as an interpreter. I interpreted for him in, in the, 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 the Cub Scout pack. Um, by the time we got to the second year, I was wind up. I was running this, running the Cub Scout pack. Love turned out. I love doing that. Got into Boy Scouts, helped out with that, and it was something the two of us could do together. And the truth is, I hate camping. My idea of camping is Motel Six, but he loves it. So it was something we were able to do together, father and son. He loves horseback riding. He actually turns out to be a fairly good horseback rider, which really surprised me. So every weekend we would, would pack up on Saturday mornings and go down to a stable where first he started out in therapeutic therapeutic riding program, a hippotherapy program. Eventually that progressed over a period of years to the point where he was actually riding independently. So you know, he and it gives him, gave him a lot of self confidence. Here is this little guy who maybe weighed 70 pounds, controlling a 1,200 pound animal and love it. Think about what you can do, Dad. This is another one I've never quite understood. I run across a lot of dads who think they failed because their child has a disability. I don't understand it. I never felt that way myself. But it ha we run across that a lot with a lot of the, of the dads. You are not a failure. Your child has special needs. You're not a failure. 
be out, get out there, be that involved dad with your child, and you'll be the success. But you're not a failure. It's okay to cry, even if it's in private. Frankly, you've got to get rid of that stress somehow. And you've got to deal with the emotions, because you have them too. It's very hard for a man to, man to cry, especially in front of people. Because the truth is, most of us are brought up where that's a sign of weakness, and we don't do it. Our fathers did, probably didn't do it. Our grandfathers probably didn't do it. And you're taught not to. For me, I know after our son was born, it was very stressful. I would sneak downstairs at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, sit at the kitchen table, and just boo-hoo. Because I had to do, I had to figure out a way to get that. I didn't, but I didn't want my wife seeing that because I had to be strong for her. Until she caught me. She thought I was making a sandwich one night and walked downstairs and then and she was like, What are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm having a cry. And she said, and she was like, Why didn't you feel like you could do this in front of me? Because I'm like, Because I gotta be strong for you. And she's like, I don't want to see that again, okay? It's okay, you don't have to hide it. Why are we together in the first place? You can trust me. I'm not going to go tell your friends. So it ceased to be an issue at that point for me. But, but it's okay. It's okay. Seeing what the blimp sees. Um, this is a story of a young man who um, actually had, uh, had Down syndrome. Um, dad was an avid football fan. Their deal was they would sit every, every Sunday on the couch and they'd watch football games. Uh, through a series of events, they managed to get tickets to an NFL game. Tickets were in the very far upper corner of the stadium. They go see the game. Little boy's having a ball. Dad's like, I can, we could see this better on TV. Why am I here? You know, why are we here? We could have stayed at home. Because this isn't the, the expectation. His expectations were not what, what, what was happening. But his son was having a ball. He said he got to halftime. Wanted to know why. You know, looked at his son's like, why are you having such a good time? And his son's response was basically, Dad, I can see what the blimp sees on TV. He said, for him, that for the dad, that was the time when kind of a light bulb went on to say, you know, this isn't about me. It's about doing something with my son or my child, and my child really enjoys it. And it's about us being together doing something and me being a dad. So keep that in mind. What is your purpose, dads? My thought is your purpose is to be there for your child. So, be there. Your child. Let your child be a kid. I don't care what their disability is or what their special needs are. They're still kids. Give them that opportunity to have fun and be a kid like everybody else. It's okay. It helps them learn. It helps them, helps them develop. Let your child try. Let them try new things. Try different things. It's okay. And let your child fail. Because the reality is, in the long run, helping them to fa letting them fail will also help them succeed. Think about when, when you learned to ride a bicycle. How many times you fell off that bicycle learning, learning to ride it? Every time you fell off the bicycle was a failure. It was a failed attempt. But you kept trying and trying. Part of letting them fail is teaching them that it's okay. You can get up and do it again. That's how you get to success. And let's face it, for a lot of these guys with special needs, these, these young ones with special needs, as they get older, it's going to be harder sometimes finding jobs or getting through school. But, that, that, but developing that ability and that willingness to just keep trying will be hugely important for them in their life. Now, this does not mean to beat them 473 consecutive times at checkers. That defeats the purpose. Let them win once in a while. Let them win some. But, but let them experience the other side of that, too. Okay? Give them responsibility. They're going to need to have responsibility in their life. Remember, hopefully somewhere along the line, your child's going to, going to be able to live independently without you in some form or fashion. And the reality is... In most cases, we our children out, will outlive us. So they're going to need some degree of independence. They're going to need that and understand how to have responsibility and how to function and be responsible for things. Give them, and it doesn't mean, you know, handing them the family budget or telling them go cut the yard if you've got a kid with CP, but or, or you know, 